Hey there, friend. All right, this is a long video, but I promise you it's the best video. This is me thinking out loud about how to develop your study guide. I'm doing this with EA Science Exercise 3. But if you watch it all the way through and you really put yourself inside of your own certificate area, you could make this for yourself. Go watch it. Have fun and grow big. All right, I am looking right now at your AYA Science Component 1 document, which I got straight off of the Google, I mean, off of the MBPTS website. Okay, this is your C1 like directions guide. And I am on page... 64 of that guide. So the number one thing I want to point out and remind you of is the only three standards you are looking at from your national board standards are knowledge of science, standard two, curriculum and instruction, standard three, assessment, standard four. Okay, now knowledge of science is going to give you the content you need. Standard three curriculum and instruction is going to give you the um, maybe examples of how you would move the kids to the content. And the assessment is going to give you the, hmm, how do I look at what a kid has done on this work sample and figure out what he or she needs? Now, I think, and that's in the mind of the national board, that's, that's what the thinking is. So when we look at what is this sample exercise about, it's really about seeing you as a science teacher that uh, sees and understands your content conceptually. So you can take, you can get to the big picture with kids and kids can understand the big picture in science and not just all the minute little details. So when, when you look at what is this exercise asking you to do, first of all, it's asking you to demonstrate your knowledge of scientific conceptual development. So how is that going to happen? We'll talk about that. But also remember, that comes from standard two. Describe a student's conceptual understanding of scientific concepts. Again, that comes from standard number two, but you have to understand the unifying concepts and really know what those unifying concepts are for yourself. So I have some resources that I like, but I'm not a science teacher. I'm just, I'm telling you, I like them from the national board standpoint <clears throat> that I'll show you. And by describing instruction, where are you going to get instruction support from standard number three? You need to look at it in regards to your, um, when you get these unifying concepts, like, okay, what do, do my standards say <clears throat> about this curriculum instruction? And your this instruction is going to move the student toward the accepted understanding of the scientific concept. Well, this is kind of backwards here. Because what they're doing is they're giving you an example of a student not really understanding uh, everything. And so you have to use assessment to understand what they know and they don't know in the overarching unifying concept. So the criteria for scoring is simply that you can evaluate the student's conceptual understanding. You can look at the stimulus and say, here's what they know, here's what they don't know. And, and through that, examine their work is kind of pick out all the things, maybe things that they are um, having misconceptions about, um, they don't have prerequisite information they need, that type of thing. Second one is description of two scientific concepts a student would need to understand in order to move toward this accepted scientific conceptual understanding. So you've got to, to have two ideas for each concept already in your mind going into the assessment center that you would put in place for this for a child. Again, I'll show you how to do this. An informed description of the instruction you would use to address the student's conceptual understanding. Um, so again, you know what the student can't do. You've got two ideas of what you need to teach them. And now what is that instruction going to look like toward those two goals? That's, that's what we're doing here. So when we move on day on this on page 65 is an actual stimulus. 
So you can read like the student response and see what they did. And, and then the exact three things that I just read to you are what you have to tell them in the assessment center. So it's not a surprise. You know what you're answering in the assessment center. And then when we look at our leveled rubrics, we're looking at a two, which is where you want to get to, or where you have to get to, I should say. Um, you would give an incomplete identification of the student's conceptual understanding through the examination of their work. So I'm not sure what happened last year. Maybe you were just total, it's like you didn't even give an incomplete last year because you would have gotten a two. So you might have just been completely off base. So you might need to study like the concept and the unifying concepts again, okay? Um, an incomplete description of two scientific concepts that you would need to understand and an incomplete description of the instructions. So just kind of throw in stuff out on the paper, but nothing's really complete. It, it could potentially, it's limited, could potentially work, but it's just, it's not complete. Now, the, oh, here's the level one. So level one is an inaccurate or missing identification of the student's conceptual understanding. An inaccurate or missing description of two scientific concepts. An inaccurate or missing description of the instruction. So you some you were in this range doing something. So as you listen to me today and you look at what I offer you, you think, okay, what was it I did there? We really want you up here on the accurate identification of the student's conceptual understanding and an accurate description of the two scientific concepts and an informed description of the instruction. That's really where we want you is at least at three. So the next place I go is over to the scoring guide. And um, I know you were in my orbit last year, so I know you probably did all of these things that, that, um, I, I told you guys that you should be doing and you should come into the scoring guide and all of that kind of thing. So what I feel like is these are the two places where you mucked up last year. And it's not a terrible thing that you mucked up because now we get to learn from this. If you were asked to design instruction, <clears throat> excuse me, how well were you able to plan and articulate appropriate instruction or intervention for the stated teaching and learning goal? And if you were asked to review a scenario, how well were you able to comment on the issues, challenges, or students' needs presented in those scenarios? So those are the two things that we're working on. Uh, and possibly characteristics of <clears throat> students' work samples. Now, I'm on page 21 of the scoring guide looking at this, just so you know. Okay, and also I have pulled up here your standards for the national board. Now, I want you to notice what I have done here, Danielle. I've gone to the, I, I call this an hourglass, but it's really not that. It's a magnifying glass. And I've typed in the word concept over here. So again, magnifying glass, type in the word concept because this is all about conceptual stuff. And I'm going to click next. It shows me 48 different places that your standards talk about concepts. And that's what this whole thing is about. Remember, what are our specific standards we need to stay inside of right now? Whoops, where am I at? Standard two, standard three, and standard four. So notice we're in standard two, knowledge of science. It's showing us the word concept or concepts. We're still in two, still in two. Now we're going down to three. We're in three. Look, conceptual understanding, concepts. You want to be reading those parts of your standards because that <clears throat> and taking notes on those, those parts of your standards are what matters. And they give you ideas of what, of, of examples of what kids could do or what you could do in instruction. Assessment um, standard, again, we're using this one. I still see the word concept or conceptual in this one. Keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. This is into learning environment. 
Are you going to really need anything in learning environment? No, not for this one. So we're not going to be focused on learning environment. We're only focused on the word concept or conceptual in standards two, three, or four. Is that right? I, I can't remember. Yeah, two, three, or four. And, and so it's an easy way to go and read what matters and, and get your notes. Now, the other thing is I'm going to show you a website where um, I just Googled. I don't even remember what I Googled. So we're going to go back and look at what I Googled. But this teacher, this is a high school teacher, she's taught geological time or something. And she's giving you examples of her students' work and she's talking you through it. She's telling you what their misconceptions were, that they had trouble with things. This is the way the National Board wants you to think. And this, uh, and right. <laughs> and this is um, also great to study student work samples so that you can kind of put yourself down into a kid's mind. I know you teach this and you do this, but this is just looking at it from a, oh my gosh, I don't do it that way. Because in the national board process, when you get there for the scoring, you're going to see something you probably have never taught before or done that way. So this is one example, and I'm going to show you over on the other screen where I got that from. It's I just wanted to go through all my PDFs first, okay? All right, let's go over to my actual screen here with all my tabs, and let's see that I have created a Google Doc here. And I've taken those three things that matter to score that two and hopefully a three, and I've put them into the Google Doc. So you're going to need to evaluate the student's conceptual understanding. So let's just imagine that right here, you had uh, this image, okay? Let's just imagine that that image was there and you're answering these questions to that image. Okay, so here, here's our image. We have to evaluate the student's conceptual understanding of this. And actually, there's more to this. Let me put this up here. Okay, so you're going to have to evaluate the student's understanding. Then you're going to have to describe in detail two concepts that the student would need. They would have to have it in order to move and understand things better. And so what I encourage you to do is try to do this right, right now or whenever you get to it, and then go back and read what the teacher wrote about it on her paper. Same thing here, take this one, and you're just going to keep repeating it. This is how you create your own study guide. You like find things like this and then you, you practice. And the teacher's written all around this as well. Now, um, I also would put an MVPTS standards connection to it. So I would look at the student work and I would evaluate the student's conceptual understanding. I would describe the two things. I would briefly describe what to do next, and I would write down anything I can remember about the standards. Remember, because you've already read the standards, you've, you've memorized those three standards mostly, right? And, and just what was it that you remember the standards said? I would put that there, and then it could all mesh together into a beautiful writing. And so right under it, I would like just do it in, um, you know, just a full flowing paragraph. It doesn't matter if you know, you have complete, incomplete thoughts necessarily. It's just get it down on the paper. Da, 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 da. So within 30 minutes, you're going to have to mind map this for yourself. Quick, quick. And then, and that may just mean you just type in the first part in a paragraph, do, do, do. No, second part, do, 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 do. And then putting it all together. Connect okay, that. I put in earth science high school work samples from students. That's what I did. Earth science high school work samples from students. So then I got here to the science spot. The science spot. It's just the first one I clicked on. I didn't do any more. I just did this one. And, and notice they she had a, 
uh, Earth Watch project. I didn't go in and look at that, but I went to piecing together the past geological time scale. And notice right there, it says student work sample document that goes along with the overview. So she gives you the lesson overview of how she would teach the student work samples, all of that. That type of thing you need to study. You need to study those things. What are other teachers doing? Write those examples down. You just need to consistently build up a notebook and then study what they're doing. The point here is that you're able to find diagrams of learning progressions in earth science. That's the point. So that you can see, remember what, what I told you, you have to have the um, conceptual understanding all right. And then, so I don't really see the conceptual understanding on this, but you have to have the conceptual understanding that you want them to have. And then the science concepts. So these are, these are to me like concepts, the concept of erosion, the concept of how earth materials work um, to then move forward to understand whatever the bigger overarching part of erosion is. And I guess that concept is like materials wear down or something. I don't know. I, I don't know our science, so I can't tell you. But it's bigger than this, and these are almost like concepts. And then what would you do? What would you teach down beyond that? So looking at learning progressions in earth science, and I, I personally like visual mapping. It just helps me to see it better. But it's up to you. That will really help you. Now, the other thing, when we go back to this exercise is, I went on a hunt for the unifying concepts of earth science. Well, I landed on two different things. I landed on um, this from National Academies, which it gives you the core and component ideas in earth and space sciences. And so I, I really want you to look through this. I mean, it's a book, but I don't want you to read the whole book. I just want you to understand that we have to understand the bigger picture and then all the little things that fit under it. And then even those little things, how, how do you take them smaller? So this is going from the biggest to the next, da, da, da. And then I love this, everything about this article. I don't care how long this thing is. I really do not care how long this is. I would want you to read everything about earth science in this. It has things that are not earth science, but um, this is... This has got like backwards design in it from Jay McTie. It's next generation science in the classroom. John McKinney wrote it. It's got a lot of great research that really matches the what they're trying to get you to do and think here around planning curriculum instruction and assessment. So what matters is the earth science pieces of this, but just to really get and hone in on that cycle of curriculum instruction and assessments, what I need you to do. And this one is what, you know, I found is core ideas. Just this is like my quick route to understanding earth science because I never had to take earth science when I was in school. I guess I'm too old for that. It came after I graduated to be a core class. Like we we didn't have it as a core class. Anyway, um, so they're saying the first core idea is Earth's place in the universe. Second is Earth's materials and systems. Third core is Earth and human activity. Again, I wouldn't believe that until I go over to the National Board Standards, Standard 2 for you. Yes, Standard 2 for you. I would go over there and I would make sure that this is lining up. And then I'd go to my NGSS or whatever, whatever the unifying concepts are. That's the big word here. This is where I got all this from, the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. So that's that came, uh, these came from there. So for me, I'm like, all right, I've got to really study around the Earth's place in the universe. And I've got to really understand all the smaller components below it. I really had to mind map it out. Same with Earth's materials and systems. I need to do that. And then same with Earth and human activity. I need to almost like make myself my own mind maps or I need to deal with finding student work samples or lessons and going through this whole cycle here or both, whatever, whatever you want to do. But finding more websites like sciencespot.net would will help you to really like get your mind into where the uh, where other teachers are and how they think through this phenomenon of 
um, curriculum instruction and assessment. Okay, and then backwards, assessment, uh, instruction to curriculum, both ways. All right, so I hope that this helps. 